Hello, welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV. Let's hop into our first 24-man raid, which, for some reason, queued instantly. <laughs> Guess there's a lot of people doing them right now in preparation for 5.3, even though we're not going to see 5.3 until July. First part uh, is just you know it's it's trash groups. It's sort of like I guess mini boss monsters. I mean like they're not really mini bosses. They just have more HP. They hit a little bit harder. They these demons in particular have knockbacks, and you gotta fight them on the green stones that are slightly more elevated than the rest of the floor because the rest of the floor still pulls up with poison. Ouch. Stay away from the Headley! Why are 50 DKP? And then also, um, quite a number of people who go into alliance raids are just doing it for EXP. And so, they're just like, well, oh, the other 22 people will carry me. And that idea pervades uh, so far that... I 
that can be sort of a problem sometimes. On the bright side, Labyrinth of the Ancients has been nerfed into the ground so hard by, uh, mainly by letting us come in here with, with no item level restriction for the 50 cap that, uh, you know, the bosses disintegrate. But they've also, this particular fight, they've nerfed a mechanic in it with the adds. They run into the dragon, we all take 1500 damage, and they get to its corpse. What's kind of funny to me about this dungeon, or this, this raid though, is it's based off the Labyrinth of the Ancients in Final Fantasy III, and all the bosses in it are just normal encounters within the Labyrinth of the Ancients in that game. So like this Bone Dragon, uh, what the boss in Final Fantasy III? It was just a normal encounter. You could actually run two of them at once. The, uh, mechanics for this fight are just completely in invented. They're, they're Final Fantasy XIV uh, original invention. that he started casting before the, the pull stopped. That's silly of him. And in, uh, in an alliance raid, each party, it's, we're actually three separate parties that are together as an alliance, and each one gets their own loot box every time you kill a boss. Uh, now the gear we can get here is important, uh, because it's only item level 80, but some of it sometimes is pretty cool for glamour, and obviously you can turn it in for, uh, company seals. Got some Mountain Dew water here. People telling pun jokes in the lunch chat. Now for this particular part, you know, each each party goes to their own place, but they all depend on one another to Uh, do the content. Like you see how Alliance A over there is, has a yellow pad and this Atomos has a yellow uh, aura. If they, if they don't have at least four members standing on the pad, then the Atomos and this yellow right here will become invulnerable until they do. Same thing with, uh, well, there was a pink pad over there. That's tied to Alliance A's Atomos. And my, my alliance, or my party is being stupid, so... Go figure. Also, something that happens ever since they, um, if you noticed, like, in an early video, earlier video, when, I, like, Kalatali dungeon, when I was killed and knocked out of the boss arena by not making it there in time due to the cutscene, uh, when you don't make it into a boss arena now, they, you know, give you a 30-second prompt or whatever, and then they automatically teleport you into the boss arena. 
when that happens with the Otamos mini boss there, uh, the game just like randomly puts you with one of the different parties. So it's really easy to get. Um, into the wrong party. Oh, it's kind of annoying sometimes. Now this boss is Thanatos. And, uh, or Thanatos. And uh, you got these imps and pots. The imps and pots, they give each party a buff that turns them into, you see how that guy over there is kind of like translucent? Um, that's you can't hurt Thanatos without having that buff. So, you have to wait until the magic pots give them to you. These ghosts tell it to the magic pots and slowly kill them. Uh, the magic pot, if all the magic pots die, then you won't be able to hurt Thanatos and it's a wipe. But, if you notice, you know, he's uh, pretty much evaporating, so. I don't think I've gotten to see Alliance C get to actually hit Thanatos since, like, 2015. And at that point, that was just because we had a particularly bad group. Also, I have them disabled because I don't like them cluttering up the screen because uh, I don't really need that information, but um, on the HUD layout, there's actually an option to be able to see... Stop for a second. There's an option to be able to see... Uh, where is it? Alliance list. Right? So, like, if I turned it on... Where did I even put it? Eh, whatever. Our tank's not even in the arena. Fantastic. Basically, this mini boss is like you want to kill the gargoyles close to the same time. Nothing really bad happens if they die, like, not in sync, but uh, they're tied to the bomb in the center there. These black bombs move, and they feed the center bomb and make it larger. If it gets too large, you wipe. Um, but everything dies so quickly these days that, again, uh, doing things properly hardly matters, and you can just tunnel the Pasagos. Why did our tank die? Yeah, whatever. it on. Alliance list one, where are you? Huh. Oh, that's, that's like a, that's a hot bar. That's not Alliance list one. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but see, see, you, you can see the other alliances, jobs and HP, if you turn that on. I don't like having them on though, because uh, 
it, uh, you know, like it clutters the screen and it's information I don't need. Now this fight also got nerfed into the ground uh, in a couple of ways. Uh, that Iron Giant you see, he used to have to be tanked over to the side because you see you need these comets. You gotta hide behind them to not die to equip the Meteor. And they have to be outside of the Behemoth's hitbox. Uh, as you can see, that samurai who thought that he could stand inside the Behemoth's hitbox because there was a meteor there, he's now dead. Um, but that Iron Giant, with a single sweep of his sword, he used to be able to kill, break the comets. So he had to be tanked away from them. But they did an update where his swing just does damage to the comets. The comets have like 5,000 health or whatever, so it would take like four or five swings for him to break them. So it's, you know, it's just one of those things. And down it goes. Goodbye, Kaiser Behemoth. King Behemoth, whatever. What a convoluted way to have an elevator. But I guess, you know, if you're sealing the elevator, then it makes sense, sort of, kind of, in a way. They renamed this boss that we're about to fight. He used to be named Acheron. And supposedly that was a mislocalization or something. And, uh, his name is supposed to be Legton or whatever. Oh, do I not get to go to the... Uh he's a pretty simple boss. Uh, he's got some unique telegraphs that look fancy but uh, that were supposed to have been designed to, um, I guess, be most disruptive to ranged and healers or something. Uh, and he has a spell called Ancient Flare, which he'll go to the center to cast. It does 9,999 damage to everyone in the arena. You have to put up, you have to stand on these switches to put up a barrier. If you don't get the barrier up, or if you're inside the barrier when Ancient Flare goes off, then you die. Uh, he can't, he, it's based on HP percentages, uh, but he also has like a rotation he gets locked into. So it's entirely possible for him to only ever to, to only cast it once. Normally he will cast it twice, and uh, you'll need to really groove and move, unlike Line C over there. And we wipe. Thanks, Line C. But that's really common. People get tunnel vision, and they think that uh, oh, we can kill it before the flare goes off. But since not everyone, you know, like half the people in the Alliance are like, we should do mechanics, right? Then, you know, no one commits to killing it before the cast goes off and boom, wipe. Although alternatively, if you didn't have enough DPS to, to kill it before the second cast of Ancient Flare, then lots of people are just dumb and don't know the timing, despite having done this dozens and dozens of times. I think Naval Spence is being uh, disingenuous here. Oh. 
I don't know why I'm getting all these ash cards, but I won't complain. I haven't turned it on on Clyde, um, mainly because I'm lazy. But you can turn on being able to see uh, Boss's HP percent. Generally, uh, Flecton here will start casting the first Ancient Flare, I think, at 85%. And uh, once he's gone through his first rotation, and then the second one is like 45%. And, uh, you know, that's about the size of it. I don't know why our Gunbreaker is being so dumb. I'm assuming they're trying to mostly AFK their way through a line of roulette. That happened. It's quite common. This is one of the most common alliance roulette raids to get as well, because people wanting to do it for really quick EXP, uh, they put on. They put on lower level gear and they force, like there, there's item level restrictions to the other alliance raids. So basically they put on the minimum of eye level for Labyrinth of the Ancients only and then they queue for the alliance roulette. And that, that, that basically ensures that they, they won't get, you know, something else. It's quite a problem really. First time I ever did Labyrinth of the Ancients, I think I was on Warrior, and uh, I didn't really care about tanking any of the first bosses at all. But then the final boss, I was just like, nope, I'm tanking it. Oh, I forgot to give somebody a commendation. Oh, well. According to the findings of the Baldessian colleagues, the Crystal Tower was constructed to collect and store the endless energies of the sun, a characteristically ambitious undertaking. Now what are the tower's inner defenses? Judging by your haggard expression, clearing out the labyrinth was no small feat. Hmm. A giant of a man wielding a shimmering scimitar, you say? Yes, that will have been Flegeton, not Acheron. <laughs> they, put, they put a text... They put a text thing reference into the fact that they changed his name. He was a hero of the elegant revolution. Well, I am a historian and have a certain, shall we say, affinity for the lore of the Alcan Empire. It is, of course, all knowledge gleaned from the musty scrolls and tomes. The ancient texts claim that the Crystal Tower is defended by the champions of Eld. Resurrected and augmented through the Allegan's extraordinary technology. Chief, you need to see this. Mm -hmm. 
Well, well, there it is, the foot of the tower. What surprise is do you have in store for us, I wonder? I can't tell you how glad I am to have you with us on this little jaunt, old friend. Had you not beaten a path through the maze, I m very much doubt we'd be standing here now. Aw, oh, Sid already thinks of us as an old friend, despite the fact that we've only known him for, like, a month. If that... Uh, gotta plan our next step, huh? Okay, okay. Whatever you say, Charlie and Tattoo. You'd think that with Gorahatia being a a Charlian or whatever, that the Scion he would already be one of the Scions. Or know the Scions at least, or have asked one of the Scions to come along or something. Oh well. Let's see. I guess that took what, like 25 minutes maybe? If that? 20 minutes? I don't, I don't know. Uh, but while we're grooving still, let's queue up for some other dungeons that we haven't done yet. Wanderer's Palace. Okay. See if we can get into another instance while we're grooving along on this 50 plateau. Do you mind? I am trying to go turn in a quest. Some leveling blue mage. They put blue mage into the game in Stormblood, but it's what's known as a limited job because they want people to be able to play blue mage as it was originally intended. And that is to say, to be able to learn monster skills and be uh, unrealistically powerful for its level. Uh. So, rather than put it into actual content where it would smash every other job, once you had all the spells, they decided to limit its level and not allow it into, uh, you know, uh, the current level content. More prosperity, huh? Give me the money. Uh oh, okay. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Defenses surrounding the base of the spire, according to Clyde's count, elaborate defenses from both emphatically active. Heavily augmented elegant technology. Has somehow been reawoken. Gonna go hone his martial skills. And... Hm. 
Look at his lips. Such a terrible mess. Yes, it does leave the door wide open, so to speak. One cannot help but be impressed. I'm beginning to understand the reliance you place on adventurers, old friend. So this is the legacy of the Allegan Empire that was left behind. If my readings are correct, the energy source waiting atop the tower is a match for even the ultimate weapon. Nay, more than a match. <laughs> a new toy for me to play with. Surprise, surprise, it was Nero all along. Whoa! <laughs> hey, he, he, for once, he didn't refer to Sid as Garland. <laughs> or Garland, or whatever. All right, let's let's see if we can get into a queue again. Cuz uh hmm. Rambrose is frustrated over Noah's lack of progress on the crystal tower. Every trick you know, huh? You could have me try to break down the door. Hmm, mystery. Perhaps we can be of assistance. And you are? Be at ease, friends, for we share the self-same goal. I am Une, and my companion is called Doga. We are scholars of the Alcan civilization sent by the students of Baldessian to assist in your endeavor. Une and Doga, rather unusual names for this day and age, if I might be forgiven for observing, but I digress. You claim to be here at the students' behest, but we have received nary a word of your coming. I'm sure you not take it amiss if we seem somewhat doubtful. We can only assume that the message failed to reach you due to some mishap. I assure you that we are here to help. What is it, Garaha? Uh, Tis nothing. There was a pain, but it has subsided. Well, well, this is rather unexpected. Your right eye is the same as ours. The same? You, you have the Allegan eye as well? This sanguine hue is said to be a trait unique to the Allegans, yet I inherited it from my father as he did from his. Only one child in a single generation is born with the eye. All my life I have sought to learn the truth of its manifestation. If there is aught you know, I implore you to tell me. My deepest apologies, but we have no answer for you. Only one thing is certain. Those who possess the trade are bound to the fate of... by fate to Alug. Uh, as your eye has placed you upon the path you walk, so too have we come to fulfill our destiny. Absurd though it may sound, it is the truth. <laughs> They're wearing high Alugan healer set and high Alugan tank set. And they died. Hmm. 
Okie dokie. Kinda of sad I missed out on that Wanderer's Palace queue, but yeah, such is the risk you take when you press for cutscenes that you fully intend to watch. Honestly, I know they'd hate it, but it would be nice if instead of giving us 45 seconds to respond to a to a queue popping, they gave us at least a full minute. There had been so many times where if I had just had a full minute, I would have been able to get into my queue. But then again, if they did that, then then it would just wind up being there'd be so many times where it's like, oh, if only I had a minute and a half or a minute fifteen, you know. So they gotta cut, they gotta draw the line somewhere. Well, if it isn't Clyde, eager to enter Circus Tower and kill everything in sight, no doubt. As I'm sure you've already heard, though, the place is locked up tight as a clam. Wow, oh, so apparently Biggs' perception of Clyde is that Clyde is a bloodthirsty killer. I suppose it makes sense. Clyde has killed a lot of shit and a lot of people. Mainly Garleans. But also Red Belly Poachers, Coral Claw Poachers... Uh, it's killed all sorts of animals, all sorts of demons. Um, giants, he's killed. He's killed, uh, tomb raiders. He's killed undead people. We have, I understand you're having trouble circumventing the tower's defenses. It's our hope that we can be of some small assistance. With our red eyes and purple hair. If your attire is ought to go by, your assistant should prove val invaluable indeed. It's kind of funny. At the time that this, this raid came out, Second Coil of Bahamut, which is where the gear they're wearing is from, was the highest raid. And if you had that gear, you were item level 110, and you were like the hottest shit in the game. You were like the the Mac Daddy uh, Raider. Sparkle, sparkle. Mm. We're gonna miss another queue? I think we're gonna miss another queue.
Yeah, we're gonna miss this queue. Dad gummit. Nero, you're still alive. My legion is, for all intents and purposes, defunct, and my association with it means a tight noose awaits me back in Garlemald, and so I've been roaming this land of yours, you a regular itinerant. <laughs> you think us that gullible? If you're suspicious of my intent, it's only my just desserts, but I am determined to make amends. As a gesture of goodwill, I will share with you what I know, starting with these two odd characters. As you doubtless are already aware, the Crystal Tower was the symbol of ancient Alex's might and prosperity. Entry was permitted only to royalty and a select few individuals. According to the records I have unearthed, only royal blood can open the gate. In other words, the Emperor and his progeny were living keys. You mean to say that these two are descended from Alex and royalty? Oh, I suggest nothing so glamorous. To put it plain, they are imitations of royalty. Living keys born of elegant ingenuity. Clones, I believe, is the name your creators gave your kind. Is that not so? It would seem that the time for our concealment is past. Pray accept our apologies. Twas not our intent to deceive. We simply wish to avoid causing undue alarm by prematurely making what many would consider deranged claims. If it please you, let us return to the Eight Sentinels. There is much and more to tell. Very well. Come, Garland, you know me better than to think I spoke in jest. What more will it take for us to be reconciled? A gift, perhaps? An elegant tombstone. It holds information I just shared with you. And a deal more besides. It used to be jealously guarded property of the 14th Legion, but it's yours now. I wish you joy of it. I look forward to working together, old friend. not cute for anything else right now uh, lest these cutscenes take forever and a day all the cues are happening to me quicker than I ever thought possible on DPS Before we begin, pray allow me to apologize again. It was not our intent to deceive you. As you will have already gathered, we are not scholars sent by the students of Baldesia. Nay, we are clones, copies of people who once existed, given life through elegant technology. This is rather a lot to take in. Mm. It would not be considered unseemly, might I ask, why you and yours were created, and more specifically, what it is you now seek to do? 
Answering your question requires that we revisit Allegan history. Pray bear with us. The Allegan Empire reached its zenith long before our kind came into being. In that glorious age, the Crystal Tower stood tall as a symbol of Allegan pride. Parents took their children there. They might learn how the nigh limitless energy it produced brought prosperity to the whole empire. That prosperity, however, bred decadence, and the empire began to show signs of stagnation. This decline was made all the more rapid for want of strong leadership. In a matter of generations, the Allegan civilization became a pale shadow of its former self. Its once gleaming cities fell into disrepair, and its frontier lands were given over to the wilderness. Lamenting the pitiful state of affairs, one technologist made it his mission to restore Alec to greatness. Amon was his name, and he believed that the ailing empire wanted for but a potent ruler. And none was more potent than its founding father, whom he sought to resurrect. The founding father? You cannot mean Emperor Zandi. None other. As part of his experiments, Amon created clones of the Emperor's descendants. We are products of that experiment, copies of Une and Doga. The historical text mentioned the reigns of two Algan emperors named Zandi. It was commonly believed that the second was the namesake of the first. After all, such a custom is not uncommon among royalty and commoners alike to think that the two were, in fact, one and the same. Aye, Zandi returned from the grave and assumed his throne once more. And true to Amon's prediction, the emperor restored his realm to glory. It one, this is a glory it once knew. Would that he could have been satisfied with that. In his previous life, the emperor, emperor desired to bring the entire world under Algon do, dominion, an ambition that ultimately went unfulfilled. Having granted a, been granted a second chance, he was determined to succeed. Realizing that he needed more power to wage his war of conquest, Zande turned his sights towards a forbidden source darkness. In order to learn how to harness this power, he converted the Crystal Tower into a restricted research facility. Darkness? Again? Seven Hells? What is it with megalomaniacal rulers turning to darkness and lust for power? Well, at least this one won't be bothering us, being thousands of years dead and all. With that, you were right, Master Garland. Alas, Emperor Zandi is very much alive. Within Circus Tower, he still abides, his ambition burning all the more ardently for his empire's collapse. Wielding the power of darkness requires prodigious amounts of energy, energy that not even the Crystal Tower could produce. In order to augment the shortfall, Dalamud was created and launched into the heavens. On high it hung, gathering the sun's energy and channeling it, channeling it to the tower below. However, a miscalculation resulted in a surge of energy that escaped into the land. This triggered an earthquake of unprecedented violence, the calamity that ushered in the fourth umbral era. In the blinking of an eye, the mighty Alcan Empire was laid to waste. Yet even as the Crystal Tower was sinking into the earth, the technologist Amon, now Emperor Zandi's closest aide, invoked powerful magics and halted the flow of time. Every soul within the structure, the Emperor included, was placed in a deep slumber, and that state they were to remain until the time was ripe to awaken. Eris came and went. After millennia lying dormant, Dalamud was summoned back to the Earth. Its descendant, descent triggered the seventh umbral calamity in the wake of which the Crystal Tower re-emerged. At that moment, Emperor Zandi awakened. In his lust for power, the empire, Emperor consorted with the darkness and was seduced by its corrupting influence. Even though his empire is now little more than a faded memory, he will stop at nothing to see his ambition realized. It's for no other purpose but to put an end to Zandi's madness that we exist. This is the mantle we have inherited from our namesakes, the true Une and Doga. Fearing what might befall the world, the two of them sought to thwart their emperor. They gave unto us their will that we might carry on their mission should they fail. When we came to our senses within the Crystal Tower, we deliberated a course of action. 
Concluding that we alone could overcome Zandi, we struck out to find a worthy ally. It has taken years, but our search is finally over. There's no ordinary man who can cut a path through the Labyrinth of Ancients. With you as our champion, Clyde Wyvernhide, we are confident that we can end Zandi's dark ambition once and for all. Well, that'll teach me for speaking too soon. Setting my chagrin aside, I see now why you knew about the students of Baldesian, among a host of other things. You were observing our investigation the whole time. So what will we do, Clyde? The world's in grave danger again, and it just so happens you're an expert at saving it. By saving it, you mean becoming an outrageous murder hobo? Then okay. You have our eternal gratitude. Together, let us see the Algon Emperor's dark past laid to rest. Or Empire, rather, not Emperor. Whatever. Sometimes words are hard, okay? <sighs> At least when I read out loud. Yeah. No shit, Sherlock. Man, are we even gonna get through this cutscene before I run out of uh, recording time? Been at it for quite a while now. Wait, there's something I must know. My right eye is like yours. Does, does this mean... You inherited the trait from your father, you said. Know that clones are unable to bear offspring. You have no cause for concern. The Allegan Eye, you called it. But to us it is the Royal Eye, owing to the fact that the trait manifests only in those possessed of royal blood. I cannot well explain... what why the eye runs in your line, but I am just inclined to think it a, a coincidence. Though you are doubtless impatient to learn the truth, pray have patience. All will be revealed in due time. Well, isn't it obvious? One of the Allegan Royals got horny for cat boys. And started, you know, macking on cat boys, having cat boy sex. Got, probably got a cat girl pregnant. At some point, yeah. You know. Now the elegant line runs in cats. Alrighty then. Well, I suppose next time we'll be able to go into the tower. And for now, though, I'm going to call this episode here because I don't think I got enough time to queue and then also, uh, you know, get through the duty, whatever duty that may be. So if you watch, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Uh, peace out and stay safe.